Ah, California. Once again, we have flown across the country and we are back at the Anaheim Convention Center for something I have missed so far every year. Designer Con! This annual art and design convention matches together all kinds of custom artwork, custom toys, statues, t-shirts, merchandise, sculptures, pop art, street art, comic art. It's all here. We walked around for a little bit last night on the preview night and there was so much crazy stuff in here that by the time we left, I was feeling dizzy. But we're back now in the light of day to take another stab at it. Look at this, before you even enter the convention floor, they've got crazy stuff out here. Oh, that hurts my back just looking at it. All right, here we go. Wow. Just between last night and now, I forgot how God can't you end this convention is. I mean, technically, compared to D23 or NAM, there aren't as many booths or people in here. And it uses a smaller area of the convention center. But each one of these booths is so packed with so many different kinds of custom-made, original, and rare art that just five minutes in the front corner will set your head spinning. The cool thing is most of these booths are being run by the actual artists who make this stuff. So not only are you directly supporting the artists, which is cool, but there's a lot of conversations going on about the process behind all this stuff. So it can be quite educational. Look at this booth here. Depressed monsters. They've got artwork and figurines, stickers and pins, all of yeah, sad monsters. Aw, you look so sad. Hang in there, buddy. It'll be okay. Now, having walked through the whole convention floor last night, I know for a scientific fact it's impossible to show you guys everything in here. I mean, there's just too much stuff. But luckily, everywhere you turn, there's something interesting to see. There's so many creative characters. Look at this. It's a fungusaurus. Dinosaur. Or fungus hybrids. Look at this. They've got animation, little figurines. And there's literally tons of stuff like that. So many strange and creative visions being brought to life in here. Of course, it's not all just small independent artists. There are also tons of small apparel companies. And small toy companies. And actually, even a couple of big toy companies here. But from what I've seen, only the ones like Mezco that feature high-end, kind of rare stuff. You know, limited edition type things for the discerning collector. Dude, these figures are so highly detailed and so sophisticated. They're blowing my mind. All those little clothes are cloth. They actually have a lot of rad stuff in here. Like, check out these super detailed action figures. 1966 Batman, The Warriors, Scooby-Doo, Max Fleischer's Superman. Ooh, I see some sweet Batman statues in here. And oh my gosh. It's freaking Space Ghost. Oh, I need that. Ooh, I gotta detach myself from this booth. Because there's literally so much to see. Dude, there is so much interesting artwork in here. Look at this. Real Realistic Popeye. Creepy. But not as creepy as realistic Mickey, Donald, and Pluto. Weird. Wait a minute. Why does Mickey have a hole in his pants? Dude, that is freaking awesome, hilarious, and a little creepy. Hmm, actually, that brings something to mind. I should probably mention that as many cute things as there are here, this is technically an art show. So although I'm trying to be selective, there may be some uh, adult-oriented content in the room. So viewer beware, it might slip into the background here. Look at that, Godzilla, Star Wars, Gravity Falls. Dude, literally everywhere you turn, there's another amazing artist selling some of the most amazing prints I've ever seen. Oh, dude, look at that young Frankenstein. Technically, I think these ones are done by a bunch of different artists, but still, free king epic. Look at this, we got flat art, wood art, as in, would you like to see this art? Yes, I would. Weird pixel brick art. Even cloth art. Wow, look at these. Holy cow. Well, technically, holy fish, I think. All kinds of paintings. Plush chickens, they got everything. Oh, no way. Even some Gilmore Girls swag. Dude, this whole time, we've only been down the first half of the first two rows. There's just so much epic artwork and so many tiny little things to see. Like Bob Ross and a happy little tree earring. But I guess we should start moving faster and looking at some of the bigger things on display. Or we're never going to make it through. Dude, coming here was a very good idea. I mean, where else can you get? Plush food. Oh, my old enemy, bread. Whoa, look at E.T. here is getting into the enamel pin collecting game. Dude, every booth in this entire place is packed with stickers and pins and prints and t shirts, all with rad art, rad designs. There is a lot of talent and creativity packed into this place, let me tell you. I believe this dude is selling some chonies here. I can't even look at the product because the booth itself is so epic. There are actually a lot of epic booths out here. It's actually 
kind of a fun challenge walking around and trying to figure out what each one is for. Look at this. This is nuts. Uh-oh, wait a minute. I see something familiar. It's my buddy Marco's Pizza Planet Truck. That's actually how I met Fake Tyler, because he was working for the truck. And look at this. It's the van from Scooby-Doo 2, one of Allie's favorites. Don't ask me why. It just is. Well, well, well. I wasn't expecting movie cars back here, but okay. I mean, they are designed, and you can never go wrong with some movie cars. Whoa. I don't know how this stuff reads on camera, but this art is hurting my brain. Look at that. Ah. Now, as you've seen, there's tons of different stuff in here, but my favorite, or at least favorite category, has to be some of the custom toys and action figures out here. Look at this. They've got Bionic Chewy, Boss Boss. <laughs> Come on, that's awesome. The cool thing is there's all kinds of stuff like that, ranging from the exceptionally weird art-looking statue-style stuff. Look. Custom rubber puppets and old-school rubber monsters. Vinyl statues. Custom action figures. Otters. There's even some actual vintage toys. Dude, I used to have that Technodrome back there. That thing was a big part of my childhood. Lots of familiar things here. But one thing I have never seen before is this Mickey Mouse executive set. What the heck? Oh, it's got the copyright information. It appears to be real. Look at that. You got your key holder, your key your credit and identification cards. I think he's got a nice suit on. That is unbelievable. But I'm getting off track. I was trying to look at the more rare, collectible, and custom stuff. And boy, is there a lot of it. Dude, this is so awesome. So many weird things. Look at these little chicken nuggets right here. And wait a minute. How'd they get one of my teeth? These marshmallows here just remind me of <laughs> Allie at home. Oh. This is the grossest thing ever. Look, Allie. Realistic Homer Simpson. And even worse, SpongeBob. Ah. I didn't even notice the Squidward and Patrick. Look, well, I know what I don't want for Christmas. Now, one of the things I have noticed is that all this stuff can be pretty pricey. I mean, they may look like toys. But this stuff is definitely for serious collectors. Actually, I spent the last several months with some other people looking into making stuff like this. Vinyl figures and action figures, what have you. The problem has been that to make stuff like this in low quantities, meaning like under 10 or 20,000, means we'd have to sell them for 40, 50, maybe even 60 bucks. Which is about the cost of most of what you're seeing here. With some variation. I thought that was kind of outrageous when I heard prices like that, but judging by what I'm seeing at this convention, apparently it's priced like that for everyone. Anyway, we're still looking into it. I'm just trying to find a way to do it a little cheaper than 80 bucks a pop. But we'll see what happens. Actually, we do have some very cool stuff coming pretty soon. Not sure if they'll be done by Christmas, but if not, somewhere right around that time. I am getting serious creators envy in here. I mean, look at these skate decks and all this crazy stuff over here. And ooh, here's a good message. This applies to all forms of art. It's very hard not to repeat myself and just say, look at this, look how awesome this is. This is amazing, over and over. Because that's all I'm thinking in my head. I mean, there's so much outrageous, colorful, and creative work in here. I think the thing that surprised me the most about designer con so far is just how insanely diverse all the mediums are. I mean, vinyl figures, plush, pen, sketches. I mean, there's even freaking pop-up books in here. I mean, when's the last time you saw a pop-up book? They've got oven mitts and aprons here. Just all kinds of stuff. I mean, where else have you ever seen plush, extra crispy, catnip-filled bacon? Whoa, now here's some stuff I've never seen before. Look at Tony the Tiger. He has a secret identity. This is all fantastic. Dude, custom action figures are definitely my favorite. Man, most conventions, if I'm not filming, you know, if I'm just walking around as a guest, you can see pretty much everything on the convention floor in a day. But not this freaking convention. There is so much stuff at every single booth. Not to mention so many booths. I feel like even with the full weekend pass, there's just no way you could look at everything. Uh, the Milkman Chronicles mascot is out here missing and greeting. And I keep seeing tons of booths like this with long lines. Not only are a lot of the artists here meeting and greeting too, but they figured out that raffles are a very popular choice out here. Woo! Look at this. Just look at this one booth here. Look at all these baskets full of all kinds of different crazy monsters and characters. 
so many. And I'm staring at each one, trying to wrap my brain around it. I'm getting mentally exhausted. Well, to be fair, when am I not mentally exhausted? Ooh, here we have some dark and somber, creepy art. With a very funny and useful frequently asked questions over here. Get a look at that. Scary. Speaking of darkness, they have a bunch of sick shirts here. I mean, like, really rad designs. Unfortunately, nowadays, I've seen the light. And I only wear tall sizes now, which nobody makes. That's okay. I may be too tall for the t-shirts, but no one's too tall to appreciate this. Look at this weird, fuzzy felt art. They got pickle red Kirby, Ninja Turtles. That is so unusual. I've never seen anything quite like that before. Oh, a wiener dog. Who designed those? Whoa. Look at this art over here, this 3D stuff. Looks awfully sharp. Sharp art. Sharp. So much sharp. I am just so blown away by the sheer talent of some of these sculptors. I mean, these things aren't very big. But the way they managed to perfectly capture a likeness that is was, uh, incredible. Dude, look, they're doing it all out of Sculpey. I've got Sculpey. But I do not have that kind of talent. And I also don't have a King of the Hill pin set. Ah! All of these are so awesome. Oh, wait, yes, I do, because I just bought it. They even threw in a free Young Hank Hill as the Devil sticker. Whoa, check it out. Look, this. This is awesome, and it's all done by Jacob right here. Look, you found Jacob. It's yes, me. I did. Ah, Bill Cipher. Reality is an illusion. The universe is a hologram. My goal. Oh, and even over the garden wall. All right, I'm starting to get frustrated. There's so many rad shirts. And no tall sizes. That's it. I'm going to have to find a tall t-shirt manufacturer. And a screen printer. And start my own apparel company for tall guys. Who need tall sizes. So when we bend over, our butt cracks don't show. Not that I don't enjoy a gentle breeze as much as the next guy. It's just sometimes you want a little privacy. All right, all of this, everything we've seen so far. is just the first half of designer con. We've still got a whole other room to see, but first, check this out. K-Swiss is making some sick Batman-themed shoes, and they brought something awesome to grab our attention. It's a freaking 1989 Michael Keaton Batsuit. Dude, look at that. You can see the original Nike shoes as boots. You can see the cracks in the cape starting to form. That is epic. Maybe Maybe my favorite movie of all time. Certainly my favorite superhero movie. And that suit is the real deal. There's even a security guard here from Warner Brothers keeping an eye on it. I just want to stay over there all day and keep looking. But we've still got a whole lot more to see. And we're starting to run out of time to see it in. So it's time for us to pick up the pace. I feel like this side was full of a lot more recognizable and well-known characters. Or at least bigger companies. Like Tokidoki back there. Or the booth with fans. Famous monsters of Filmland shirts and the Mark Hamill Funko Pops. Pretty sweet, but see, I told you, this rare stuff gets kind of pricey. And as I said, I know now it's because it costs a lot to manufacture. Oh, look at this. Hello, Chucho. Nice to meet you. Look at this colorful character. Not a lot of people in costumes here. Which is kind of surprising. Ah, look at this. Heavy Metal's got a booth over here. Sideshow Toys is on this side. But don't worry, there's still a lot of strange and very unusual stuff on this side, too. Like, look at crap. Crappy kids over here. Man, that's some really crappy stuff. So many different art styles out here. I don't even know if all these styles even have names, but I know I like some of them. This is very Mary Blair. In a very good way. I really like anything that has that sort of mid-century vibe. Which includes pretty much everything by the little friends of printmaking. Oh, man. This stuff is rad. Oh, man, look at this. These are great. So much rad stuff. Gosh, there's still so so much to see here. Like I've been saying, if you're going to check out Designer Con next year, definitely get yourself at least two days worth of passes. You want to look closely at stuff, it's a must. Whoa, man. Look at these colors right here. The late 80s and early 90s are back. Ah, look at what we have here. It's Johnny Cupcakes. Now, these guys have been at a lot of events I've been at. And there's always a line, so I always assume they actually sold cupcakes. But apparently, no. It's apparel. Shows you what I know. Wow, dear. Look at all these shirts. And look at all these 
posters. Dude, these are freaking great designs. Very minimalist, very 70s. Reminds me a lot of old Disney World merch. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. I guess no convention would be complete without its Funko Pops. But actually, surprisingly... Except for this one giant booth? I haven't seen many Funko Pops at Decon. Whoa, check out these guys over here. Actually screening prints here by hand at the convention. Genius. It's been a long time since I've had a silk screen or anything. But we used to print all our tour t-shirts ourselves when I was in a band. So I definitely know the struggle. Looks like the Adventures in Design podcast is doing some live recording back there in that RV. I think I might actually be on that podcast pretty soon, so keep an eye out for an ear out. Okay, this is what I was coming to see. Check this out. It's a screen used 1989 Batmobile. Apparently this one is just mostly a shell because it was the car used to just, you know, spin around on the turntable. The spinner car, if you will. Just like the bat suit, this one's also got its own Warner Brothers security lurking carefully in the background, keeping an eye on it. And you can actually walk up and get a free picture with the Batmobile. You just stand on the X over here, right in front of the Batmobile. Look into the camera and they'll print you out a copy. I want one. Allie, why don't you buy me one of those for Christmas? You're so mean to me. You know what I want, and you always get me other stuff. Where like do we socks. keep it? In the living room, I don't care. I'll live in it if I have to. Buy me one. I know you've got the money somewhere. Oh, dude, that is a sick pick. All right, now we've kind of skipped around to the far side of the show over here. But there's a good reason. There are a couple of art shows lurking back here. I have an added twist. Apparently, if you download this app, you can look through your phone and with augmented reality, watch these paintings come to life. All right, I've got to admit, that is pretty cool. I mean, it's a little funny that you have to come out somewhere in real life to then just look through your screen at it. But it is pretty impressive technology. This was actually just a happy accident because what I was really coming to look at is another mini art show over here, all based around Mark Hamill and his many voice acting characters. Dude, there is there's a lot of stuff over here. As you would expect, there are definitely references to Mark Hamill playing the Joker, but he's also done so much more, including Star Wars voiceovers, but also the Powerpuff Girls, doing the voice of Skip, and of course, plenty of references to his recent turn as the voice of Chucky. One thing I haven't seen over here are a lot of Castle in the Sky references. There's one right there in the corner, but I think that's it. Anyway, pretty awesome. Imagine having an art show done based all on you. Must be pretty surreal. Ooh, check it out. It's the Shag booth, and look who's signing pieces of art. None other than Shag himself. Dude, I love Shag's artwork. It can also be extremely pricey. That's the thing. I feel like we're so spoiled by cheap consumer goods that we expect our art to be cheap, too, without ever thinking not only do these people deserve to make a living, well, if their art's any good, that is, but they also, in that case, deserve our support. Gosh, there's a lot of great stuff in here. I feel like I keep saying that. But it's so true, dude. Look at these black light posters over here, including velvet ones. Dude, my aunts had a lot of artwork that looked like that in the 80s. Takes me back. Oh no, we've got double trouble. We've got Mondo toys on one side and just across the way, Super 7. Mondo makes some super rad stuff, insanely detailed stuff, like the most epic animated series Batman I've ever seen, rad Rick and Morty stuff, even the creature from the Black Lagoon. Super cool. But if it's a contest for me, Super 7 will always win because their reaction figures are all in the same scale as the old vintage Star Wars figures, three and three quarter inches. And they're always throwing back to my childhood heroes. I mean, finally, your Pee Wee characters are the same scale as your Robo Pop toys, which are the same scale as the turtles, and they can all fight with your vintage Luke Skywalker figure. It's genius. Oh man, I'm glad I don't have any money right now. Or this pizza would be coming home with me. Ooh, look at this. Urban Aztec. Anything with black light capabilities gets my attention. Oh, awesome. The Bob's Burger Burger Mobile booth this past. Such a great freaking show. Ooh, what have we got here? The hip hop trooper meeting up with some new friends. Dude, the freaking Hip-hop trooper, man. That guy's been around for a long time. Oh, weird. Never seen him without his helmet on before. Gosh, I keep feeling like we're almost there. We're almost done. And then I turn the corner and bam. They've got all this insanely detailed stuff right in your face. Everything from Star Wars.
Wars and Marvel Hot Toys to whatever the heck these things are. I think that's the oh most God, fun part of Designer Con. So much talent mixed with so much epic strangeness. Dude, you know you're getting overstimulated when all this kind of epic I stuff starts seeming commonplace. We're just surrounded by weird stuff everywhere. I mean, literally, every time I turn around, I see something new and it never gets any less strange. We the wonderful world of weird. Ooh, I'm starting to get a little loopy. I think I'm losing my mind. I must be right because this can't be real. Fantasy taxidermy? Okay, this is bona fide strange. I'm pretty sure these are actual taxidermy deer heads with stained glass windows and little rooms inside. You definitely don't see that every day. Bambi! What have they done to Bambi? Man, you know there's a housing shortage when people start living in Bambi. Ooh, and speaking of Bambi, look at this. There's a whole bunch of hand-sewn little faux taxidermy characters. Oh, look at the little Ewok. Even the creature looks cute. Wow, 3D art. Ooh, I like the owl. Wait a minute. There's 3D glass. Oh, it's not just 3D in that it's painted on board. It actually looks three-dimensional. Ah. 3D bread, not bread. All right, this is the trippiest art I've seen at the whole show. And it's by Tripper Duncan. Perfectly named. Man, there's a lot of mounted heads in this area. These ones are called horrible adorables. They call me that too. Dude, I feel so bad that I can't stop and show each individual booth because they all have so much crazy stuff like Katie Caron or the merch motel over here. Hello. Look at this pin they just gave me. This stuff is all so great. And I swear every booth is packed with awesome stuff like that. Some of these booths like sweet siren designs over here are familiar. They're people I've seen before at other events. But it was really surprising to get here and find so much stuff I've never seen before. I mean, we pop up at a fair amount of conventions now, but nothing, nothing, nothing I've ever been to has been anything like this. I mean, look at these glass art uh, sculptures. <laughs> Sculptures. I wouldn't even know what it takes to create something like that. Insane. And then right behind that, our dude's actually painting here live on the floor. What the heck? Dude, I could never do that. I could never do anything when people are looking over my shoulder. Oh, wow. They've even got Lego art in here. Check it out. It's the up house. And whoa, look at the Lego portraits. Oh, this has to be my favorite, though. My parents are dead. Poor Batman. He's sad. One thing's for sure is I definitely gravitate the most towards all the statues and vinyl figures, all the toys. I mean, I guess they're not really toys. They're collectibles. But whatever you call them, they suck me right in. And the more custom and weird they are, the more fascinated I am. I mean, look at this. This is so cool. These people are creating their own worlds. I'm jealous. So many different kinds of monsters out here. I mean, of every size, shape, and description. I just love that even toys have become so DIY. Look at this. You can even buy a blank one and turn it into whatever you want. Like I've said many times before, my dream is to have my own action figure. Still working on it. Still working on it. It's definitely inspiring to see so many other people out here have done it. Just a little sobering. You know, seeing the prices. I was hoping to be able to make some and sell them for a whole lot less than that. But we'll see what happens. Oh, dude, I forgot about this table. These might be back-to-back -back some of the coolest booths at the show. Because they feature all kinds of crazy crazy custom action figures. I mean, look at these. Some of these are based on bizarre folk tales. Others are epic mashups. Still others are kind of art or political commentary. And some are just made because they're darn funny. This is my favorite table ever. Master Natural. Great Scott, you're a werewolf. Or how about cardboard? It's cardboard. Slave Han role player. Good old burn face. How about that spooky Mitch? Chewy Lewis and the news. Dude, I can't get enough of this corporate cease and desist soup. Street Wars Return of the Jackets. Oh, it's all great. What in the world are some of these? I mean, dude, these are fantastic. Why? Just why? Boba Wood, Hank Solo. And what's crazy is on the back wall, they've got a whole lot more, including a whole series of space rats. I mean, that's just the stuff that I gravitate towards, but they also have some legit epic-sized sculptures, both showcasing manufacturers and fancy sculpture artists as well. Well, some of this stuff is really trippy. Here 
we have the insecurity camera. I feel like that one's been watching me. Wow, check out some of this artwork right here. All made out of hanging wire. That stuff is a trip. I mean, when you get right alongside it, it's relatively flat, but it looks so three-dimensional from the front. Whoa, check out this centerpiece here, though. That is very, very unusual. This guy has got a lot going on in his head. A lot going on in his mind. I'm not an art critic, but I feel like that represents confusion. But mainly only because of how confused I am. Wow, talk about unusual. This booth over here features artwork by people with developmental disabilities. What a cool idea. Getting to be creative and expressing themselves. And honestly, creating some pretty amazing, pretty interesting stuff. I was not expecting that, but that was awesome. And it just goes to show you, art is for everyone. Wow, some uh, very interesting pieces here. What in the world? So much that is strange and unusual. So overstimulating and exciting. Look at this right here. It's a whole booth of cacti kids. A little family of cactus that lives in Palm Springs and sometimes hangs out in hanging pots. So much creativity. I feel like all I can make is a mess and noise and trouble. I mean, comparison is the thief of joy. And I do make films and entertain people. But you can't touch a video, you know? It just feels different than making something physical. Literally feels different. I guess what I'm trying to say, and not very eloquently, is that I have so much respect for all the different artists and creators in this building. And this last section in the back of the show floor is packed with a lot of them. This is like the legit artist alley area where all kinds of individual creators and artists are manning their own booths, which again are full of all kinds of epic creations. Like look at all these handmade prints Done on the back of math. What'd you say your name was again? Craig. It Craig. Came Thunderbox. He did all this stuff. Thunderbox. That's insane. Oh man, each one of these is completely different than the last. So many layers, so much texture. That is freaking awesome. So many creative people here and you can just get right face to face with them and learn a little bit about what makes them tick and how they make their art. And not just the painters and illustrators, but doll makers, toy makers, and even puppet makers. Look at these little pukas. Uh, I might have to get one of these. I think it's a lot. Please buy me. I might have to. Yay! Puppets and creatures. I love freaking puppets. I mean, I've been making videos ever since I was old enough to hold a camera. Literally, I used to make weird VHS tapes and pass them around to kids at my school. But my other passion as a kid was I always wanted to be a Muppeteer. My first job, actually, was being a puppeteer at a place called Adventure City here in Orange County. Maybe not the greatest theme park, but it was a pretty fun job. Ooh, dude, look at this. What and weird. Look at this. They've got gremlins. They've got King Kong, Robocop. They've got all the best characters, even Cylons. And best of all. Because of my wife, dude. I just think it's so cool that people here are making their own comic books, stickers, prints. I mean, even their own toys, for goodness sake. I mean, look at this. We're literally watching this stuff get hand painted and assembled on the show floor. There's just something awesome about DIY stuff, limited edition stuff, and best of all, supporting small creators. Like these people here who make their own comic books. Or these guys selling handmade boglets. It's just amazing to think that there was this much talent in the whole world, much less packed into one building. Dude, I never want to miss this show again. It's honestly seriously inspiring. Dude, Allie, look at this. Over here. Flavor bread. You need those shorts. I love that. You buy some merch and you can make it a combo and get the cup. Anyway, there's just so many styles, so many artists, and so many methods and forms of creative expression. I don't think there's any way anyone could come here and not be overwhelmed a little. But also, like I said, seriously inspired. All right, so Designer Con goes for three days this year, and the whole weekend pass that we got was only 80 bucks, which included the preview night last night on the Friday during which this entire place was empty so you could get first dibs on any of the sick merch. I gotta say, for me, it was worth the money. And I know they've already plotted out the dates for next year. So if you have the chance to come, I highly, highly recommend it. All right, well, we've gone way, way over our time budget for today. So I guess we've got to start making our way out of here. Hopefully I didn't miss anything too awesome that I could have shown you guys. But honestly, it's not very easy to tell because there was epic stuff everywhere. Even walking back through now, I'm seeing so 
so much stuff I didn't notice before. But I guess at some point, we've just got to call it a day. Thank you guys for hanging out with us at our first ever designer con. I've got the feeling it won't be our last. There was just too much awesome stuff to see. So I feel like we'll have to do it again next year. All right, guys, make sure you check out all the links down below, the social media stuff. Hit subscribe and the little bell thingy if you want to see more. Check out the merch or maybe Patreon if you're really liking the show. We've got some podcasts on there and stuff like that. And now that I've mentioned all that annoying stuff, I normally try not to. I believe I've done my duty. And because you've made it all the way to the end of this video, you've done your duty too. And now we can all go home and sleep now. I did actually go back and buy this. I still can't believe this is real. Look at this. I got my own <laughs> credit card now. I got some Mickey money. I got my ID, keys. Sick. I can get into Disneyland anytime I want. I'm an executive. Executive! Ooh, look at this. We got Frank and Fat over here. We have Trix, Healthy Rabbits, Don't Eat the Tricks, and Faker. 100% nutrition free. Dude, look at this stuff. Not to mention the Kill Cat. Evil Wafers! <laughs> We've also got Mr. Self Indulgence here eating his own eye. That's me. Somebody over here really hates food. The irony is on the other side. They're actually selling that Funko cereal, you know? I like all the funny, uh, whoa, colon blow. <laughs> oh, that could come in handy sometimes, you know, if things get all stopped up from too much Bob Ross joy of cereal over there. Look at that. I'm gonna send some of this to Mark Hamill. Dude, I am so tired from staring at all of this art and looking at all the little details for more than eight hours now. I'm just cramming so much weird stuff directly into my brain. I know for a fact I am gonna have some weird dreams tonight. Oh, yes, I vote for Ron Swanson based on the Swanson Pyramid of Greatness. Ooh, before we go, to all of you who have asked, yes, I am feeling pretty good now, spine wise. Not all the way in, the disc, three of them. So my left hand still kind of feels asleep most of the time. I'm getting recommended to some more specialist doctors and stuff because they have to worry about nerve death from them getting pinched too long, but I'm feeling more or less okay, you know, just taking it easy, taking it slow. But I appreciate everyone who's been asking. I'm mainly just excited to get back to work, back to making more stuff, especially after seeing all of this. Keep your eyes peeled for new adventures, guys. Because once I get back to 100%, I'm coming at you. Okay, I almost missed this. It's the best booth of all. Look at this, Yoda's Dago Beans. Plastec DL44. Empire Strikes, yeah. This is the best though, Master Clean. Bounty Hunter Ultra Yubna. Genius. This is the best art of all of the art. Close down the show, everybody. They won. Whoa, check this out. Look at all these VHS lamps. These guys here are geniuses. I didn't know I could have made them all into lamps. I would have hung on to them. Man, they've done it. These madmen. Look at this, it changes color as you get close to it. All right, I don't remember my VHS being able to do that. This is some kind of witchcraft here. Dang, just walking back through real quick, I missed a lot of stuff. Like the sweaters? I didn't know there were gonna be sweaters. Sweaters and guys eating pizza and giant pills. And what you look at that gumbo.
pinball machine. It's God. Gantulin. They're full of toys. I'm not even sure if this stuff is real anymore. Stitches, smoking, there's giant gumball machines. Pandas are wearing sunglasses. What in the world is happening? Okay. That's it. It's official. I've seen too much. I'm just gonna lay down right here. Just right on the ground.